Hello and welcome back. In this section, we are going to talk about use cases of soup tech, which means in which fields and on in which area supervisory technologies can be used. So let us look at the chart and try to understand what are the benefits of soup tech and what kind of activities it can impact or it can influence or it can make more efficient. So here is the data. Soup tech helps in data collection and also data analytics, which is very much important for the regulator or the supervisor because because these are the only two tools because of which a regulator will be able to identify whether there is a non-compliance or not because regulators do not do business. What they do is that they analyze what regulated entities are doing in their own organization and their role is to analyze them, find the inconsistency and if there is a severity and if there is a criticality or if there is something else or some kind of a non-compliance has happened, then they have to find, penalize that entity and also they can revoke the license of that entity or can have other kind of restrictions on that entity totally depending on what kind of severity it is what kind of non-compliance has happened so in data collection a regulator will uh, look for the reporting for the virtual assistance for the data management so on, so on the reporting a, a regulator will always want that the reporting should happen automatically and there should be very less or no manual intervention. So what they will do is that they will talk to supervisory technology service providers and they will say create an ecosystem or systems where organization will not be able to do any manual intervention and whatever data is there into their system we should be able to pull that after obviously after their after their approval. So hence it is very much important to create an automated reported system. Second, they would also want that everything should be in real time, which means that supervisor or regulator should be able to do a real time monitoring on the basis of business rules defined, which means that it is not possible that a person is sitting in the regulator's laptop and is monitoring all the organization. That is not possible. So hence, similar to RegTech, what SoupTech service providers do is that they create business rule which is allowed, what is not allowed, what to do in certain non-compliance, what to do whenever there is an inconsistency in data. Do you want to report that immediately to the entity that your data is inconsistent or you accept that and then you take an action because the entity is has been doing that again and again. So there is something fishy. Then we are talking about virtual assistance, which means the, the regulators would also like to answer a few of the questions which businesses will have or consumers will have. So they can have a chatbot kind of a system or they can have an email, automatic email with FAQs. So those things can also be done. And then we are talking about data management. So data management means that consolidation of data across entities or across different uh, departments of that entities and, uh, and the supervisor will be able to see from an overview basis that okay, how is different entities placed and and what is their combined contribution to the economical activities within that industry and then visualization that whatever data they are receiving from different entities they should be able to view that in a glance and that they have to open multiple files to see a consolidated view and hence one role of supervisory technology service provider is also to give a better visualization and a one glance kind of dashboard and then validation which means that whatever data they are kind of sharing with regulator it should mean something right it should have sense and there should be validation uh, put in that simplest example of validation is that it should not happen that where the organization has to report a date of a transaction they are reporting the amount of the transaction so this is the basic example of the validation there could be other validation into the reporting format as well that it is allowed it is not allowed it cannot be more than the, this amount or it cannot be less than that amount so um, on the basis of what has been predefined and then in the data analytics there are uh, four different um, verticals market surveillance misconduct analysis micro potential and macro potentials so in my in market surveillance, the regulator would like to check is there a manipulation which has been done into the data or not so hence it is called the part of the data analytics where whether after analyzing the data automatically, do you see that there's a manipulation or not? RegTech service provider will be able to highlight that, okay, there could be a chance of manipulation and then also to identify whether there's a case of insider trading, which means that someone inside the organization is kind of doing the trading or is kind of sharing some private information with someone else with it which can help to kind of increase or decrease the share value of an organization. So hence, that is also something which supervisors would like to see into data analytics. Then misconduct analysis, which means that AML or CFT, which means anti-money laundering or 
about the financing of the terrorism activities, whether that is being followed or not, and if there's a non-compliance, then how can we analyze and kind of flag it? Then any fraud which has happened, any mis-selling which has happened, this is very much important because what happens service and industries, actually the financial services providers, all their partners, all their sales agent will go to a customer and will do a mis-selling just to achieve their target because there are commissions involved into it. And hence, even those kind of instances can be easily seen by collecting the data. So this data can be collected easily by the numbers, whatever the uh, reporting, number one, number two, from the customer grievance uh, numbers. If customer's grievance is increasing in terms of mis-selling, then something wrong with that entity and uh, regulator would like to take it uh, up with them. Then we talk about micro prudential, which means what is the credit risk, what is the liquidity risk, market risk, operational risk, governance risk. So as we have discussed that it is very much important to categorize the risk. And these are the risks that we are talking about, that what kind of risk it is, what is the criticality and severity. So now in this course, what you are doing is that you are understanding everything from the regulated entity side, that what are their pain points and what are they trying to do. And you are also looking at the same thing from the supervisory side that what a supervisor expects from the regulated entities so with this course you will have the view of both sides and hence uh, if you know what is soup tech and what are their expectations it will be much easier for to uh, uh, use rec tech into your organization because uh, you then you can easily kind of combine both these things and create a balance that okay this is my this is my entity this is regulated entities this is something that i have to report and then now you also know that whatever you are reporting or whatever the organization is reporting how supervisors will use it or analyze it then we are talking about macro potentials which means that forecasting uh, emerging risk signaling financial stability and policy evaluation which means that whatever policies they have made whether it has any impact on the regulated entities and in turn into the economy or if there's a financial stability which has been made or not and what are the risks which is like kind of emerging from all the entities it could be a possibility that uh, the regulator will be able to identify that okay this kind of risk is emerging from almost all the entities say 95 to 90 percent which means that could be the risk into the market. And if regulator is not creating a policy or is not kind of penalizing the industry players, it will create a lot of issues. So hence, that is also one of the important part of the supervisory technology. And then also about forecasting, which means that now they have data of the entire industry of all the regulated entities. Now they can forecast that how much the industry is growing at what rate and whether this rate is acceptable to the regulator or not. Because if any industry is going too fast, which could mean that they are not adhering hearing to kind of the regulations number one or if there is a market which is like untapped which is just new market then it, that is perfectly fine so the regulator will be able to make sense of all the data and these are different use cases or these are different angles through which a supervisor or a regulator will look at regulated entities that's all in this section in the next section we we'll talk about challenges and opportunities which is there in the supervisory or the regulator space and let us see how soup tech will solve those challenges so see you in the next section till the time take care and see you there thank you